Man alive, what a night it was in Miami. Game four, Bucks and Heat. The pregame focal point was Giannis, back on the floor after playing just 11 minutes in the opener, then sitting out the next two games with a back injury. By night's end, the spotlight was shining on Jimmy Butler, who quite simply put on one of the greatest playoff performances you will ever want to see. Here's the way it played out in Miami as the Heat took aim at a 3-1 lead over the Bucks. What, what was on that thing, Jimmy G. Bucket? That's, his, that's what they call him, Jimmy oh, that, G. Bucket. I call him Jimmy F. I know. I What's the F for? But it's Jimmy, Jimmy, get, Jimmy gets buckets. That's Jimmy G. Buckets. This dude get buckets, too. Yeah, Giannis. Glad to Milwaukee see him. jumping out on him. Glad to see him back. Oh, go get this one, though. All Jimmy G did was score 22 points in the first quarter on 9 of 10 shooting and 2 of 2 from deep. Mm. Man. That's a call locked in oh. offensively. He kept them in the game when there was a chance they could get blown out. Well, that's a foul? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's yeah. called a trip. Yeah. He scored 20 straight Miami points at one stretch. Milwaukee, though, led by five after one. Giannis lays it in and then a little gingerly coming back and getting treatment. That's what Kenna do to me. Fire That's up that show. gun. Yeah. Oh, easy. <laughs> hey, Brooke yeah. Lopez had 36 <laughs> on on that career postseason high. 57 to 50 going to the third quarter. Yeah, Brooke Lopez was fantastic tonight. But Giannis, oh. and Giannis played well, but that was one guy 26, there. 26, 10, and 13. Yeah, there was. Brooke Lopez there, 73-63. Oh, strong oh, man. Move, man. Somehow that's going to fall for him. I think he needs to do that a little bit more. That was a strong move right there. Chris Middleton in the paint. It's the runner. Milwaukee up 15, biggest lead of the night. They were up 11 going to the fourth. There's Gabe Vincent. And this, then what a pass. Oh, Brooke Lopez there. And so, 98-85. I thought this game and was here over. Here comes a 13 to nothing Miami run. And what you say, Chuck? Hey, Butler Jimmy, pulling up. Jimmy freaking Butler. <laughs> yes. Butler again from all angles. Right there, that's where you wanted the timeout, Chuck? Yeah, you have to call a timeout. You don't let teams score that many oh, points God. in a row. And then Caleb Martin, oh. that was a long two. Yeah, I don't, I, I, they should have called a timeout. And off the steal, it's Butler, and oh, there's God. the first lead of the night and for I, the Heat. And I want to thank the officials for not calling a technical in that situation. Because he definitely deserved one. <laughs> Drew Holiday. Stepping back and giving the Bucks the lead back. Yeah, but there's another man on the other. Uh, end. Yeah, this guy again. Oh, uh, told you, Kenny. What you got to do? The house on fire. Oh, you got to get the women and children out. Uh, and yep. That put him over 50. Leave the TVs, laptops. No all question, because if they're in the house, they're gonna get burnt by Jimmy freaking Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday has the ball knocked away. Pull up for three. Oh no, nope. and Take one. Butler would go to the line. Now 114, 109, and Giannis, no, that's not gonna go. And the Milwaukee Bucks, best record in the league, number one seed in the East. On the ropes. On the ropes is exactly right, Chuckster. 119 to 114. Yeah, 56. Man for Jimmy that's Butler. A, that's I mean, the best 56-point game I've ever seen in my on, life. On 28 field goal attempts. I, I tell you what, other, Jimmy Butler joins Alonzo Mourning and Dwayne Wade as the greatest Heat players ever. <laughs> <laughs> a little pointed shot. How about some yakety yak? Oh, yeah, you missed mine. Some of my bad shots went in. That's uh, That was the difference of the game. Um, I stepped on the line on the three. I really wanted it to be a three. Um, but that's the game. It's, it's a game of shot making. It's a game of runs. We withstood theirs. It legit is a complete team effort. Um, I know everybody sees the 56 points, but if they're not looking to get me the ball or setting great screens where I could get to my right or get to my left or get to the free throw line, um, this game's a lot different. He's one of the uh, most intelligent basketball players in this association. You know, it, you can't do what he does on both ends of the court just by running around and, and trying to figure things out. He understands, you know, what we're trying to do and he understands what they're trying to do. You've denied it before, but is playoff Jimmy a thing? Are you ready to? It's not a thing. It's not. I just, I just, 
I just be hooping. <laughs> Not a thing. I think that would be considered an understatement. Yeah, hey, so what's your best description of what you saw from him tonight? I said before the game, we all know he's a two-way player, but tonight he must really be offensive-minded, and he was. And a player of that caliber, when he gets going, I'm surprised I didn't take the ball out of his hand because he got hot, and it's obvious he was trying to score, and he did. And, you know, we all talked about it earlier. He willed his team to a victory. And, you know, like I took a couple of ill-advised shots, but they went in, like, you know, came down and it's three on two, and he popped back and shot a three. But he was so hot then that, you know, when he made the shot, you know, the crowd went crazy. But it was just one of those nights. But can't be too happy. You're up 3-1. Job's still not done. Milwaukee's not going to go away. Now, we know next game they're not going to let them get 56. They're going to be double and triple. So the others, Bam and those guys, Shruce or Shoes, whatever. Struce. Struce. Those, you know, those guys definitely going to have to step up. You know, I, the, the best performance i ever seen in the playoffs was tonight LeBron scored 29 out of 30 at Detroit. We were actually at that game. Including 25 straight. 25 straight and 29 out of 30. That was the best game I've seen in playoff personally until tonight. That was the best performance I've seen since I've been on television. Uh, I mean, it was flat out incredible. It was an honor and privilege to watch it. But, man, that guy was not going to let them lose tonight. Skill and will. Yeah, and, and, and deviation from the game plan. Like, the one thing you say about when you're guarding Jimmy Butler is he's a, he's a great two-point two shot maker. Tonight, he became a three-point shot maker. So the deviation was you had to extend the defense. So now he deviated from it. He's making threes. So now you have to come out. And his physicality, once he gets by you, as you saw, he was able to dunk on Giannis, which if, if I could find three clips in his career, the way he dunked on Giannis, I don't think they, they even exist. The physicality to go through him allows him to go through two guards and point guards. So the deviation of hitting the three, I thought, set everything up um, for him to have that kind of night. Yeah, he had, he's nine for 17 in the series now from three. If you're Milwaukee right now, what are you feeling? Well, you, you, you got you, you, you to say, okay, all right, we're down 3-1. We can't look at winning three. We got to win one. You got to win one. You got to make sure you win the next game. I know it sounds simple. You can't look like we got to beat this team three times in a row. You're like, no, no, we got to win one in a row. We got to get back to Miami. But we got to win the first game at home. So you, you're like, obviously, it's a must win. That goes without saying. But you got to say to yourself, okay, Let's get back to Miami. Because then all the pressure switches to Miami. But, it, but they got to get back to Miami first. You can't take any chances in game five. Because I always tell people, when you're up 3-1, if you get back home and you don't close it out, you're going to be in trouble. Giannis, 26-10-13 well, in this game. His third uh, postseason triple-double of his career. What do you want to say? It says 95% of the time that this doesn't happen. Right. I was blessed to be in the 5%, be on a team that went 3-1. to one. And the conversation was this. We're not losing at home. Like, we're going back home. We're not going to lose. All we have to do is win in Miami. When we were saying Phoenix, win in Miami. Then there's no way in the world we lose a game seven. So you should feel excited that this could happen because we're not losing at home on game five. And then when we get them in Miami, that pressure's on them because they're never going to win a game seven on our court. Did, did and just, that was the conversation. I, did not just say that? Well, I'll give you a realistic. Yeah, he's giving, he's I'm giving, giving realistic real experience. I'm giving you a realistic experience how we yeah. beat y'all. Stop, stop repeating we up, what I said. Up three, one. Be, come and up with your own stuff, already. dummy. No, the, we, you, the, you weren't in that locker room. You was in that other locker room that got beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, you have to say to yourself, we can't let one guy beat us. Not one guy. Like, we have Jimmy's a great player, but we can't let a great player go for 50. At some point, somebody's going to have to buckle down and slow him down, double him, get the ball out of his hand, and they need better clock manager. I, I you know, agree with, with, uh, with uh, Chuck. You know, when they went on that 13 run, coach got to call a timeout. Calm this thing down. You can't, you know. you, especially on the road, you can't let a team score. I mean, because 
you got the game under control and you let basically one guy score every single time and you don't even use your timeout. That, that was bad coaching in my opinion. You got to call timeout just, just to quiet the crowd down. Because obviously, you know, you look at that tape, the crowd's going nuts. And then your head as a player, your guys are spinning. They're spinning. So you got to say, oh, okay, guys, we still got a six-point lead and the ball. Or, I mean, you, you can't let them score that many points in a row because once they tied the game up, it was over. 119-114, Miami with a 3-1 lead. Last time an eight knocked off a one. Oh, my God. 12 and that was Philadelphia don't over you, Chicago. Don't you mean Chuck and Kenny after the show? <laughs> <laughs> which one is Kenny? The, oh, do you know which one, Kenny? The, which oh, okay. one? The, the one on the... <laughs> I have to stop. I have no comment. Sorry, I have no comment. <laughs>